Do you read a ton of fantasy or not so much? Or yes. A total. Oh, sorry, so you weren't much? asking me. My no. bad. No. Just like a, where are you at in your fantasy? Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate? Or are you like ready for the big stuff? Uh, do you ever wonder where you should start uh, in fantasy? Uh, or maybe you've graduated and you wonder what what should I read next? You know, you've read Harry Potter, you've read maybe Lord of the Rings. What what's the next thing that I should pick up to read? Uh, in this video, we're going to share our our picks for the the beginner books, maybe for you to pick up, mm -hmm. the kind of intermediate books if you're looking to jump from that beginner to intermediate, and then the advanced books, the ones where you're really willing to jump into kind of more epic fantasy here, and some more picks there. Yeah, totally. All right, so let's start with beginner. What do you got? Um, I've got, this is actually the second one in the series. This is Daughter of a Siren Queen. The first one is Daughter of a Pirate King. It's just a cute little duology. I actually have not read this. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. I haven't read this. I've heard it's good and lives up to the second one just fine. Um, so I, clearly, all right, this is our recommendation of a, a beginner book. Yes. Right? The reason you don't have Daughter of a Pirate King is why? Oh yeah, my friend's got it. She's yeah. borrowing it. So it is a, it's a good one to loan out and she liked it a lot. I'm actually surprised she hasn't come to get this one yet. Um, it is easy, it's quick, it's fast paced. There's only like a handful of characters you need to remember. There's not a ton going on, but it's pirates and it's fun and it's adventure. It's really great. Yep. You know, I'm, I assume most people, if you're interested in picking up a fantasy book or getting into it, have, have seen some fantasy, have been exposed a little bit, you know, either via a movie or maybe they've read like Lord of the Rings or something like that. Um, this is uh, the Heritage of Shannara. So I wouldn't actually start with Heritage of Shannara, I would start with the Sword of Shannara, um, but it, it's an excellent book by Terry Brooks. Um, it is very basic fantasy, right? So some of the critiques of this series actually make it really good for starting out. There's not a ton of characters. There's really not too much of a complex kind of backstory or lore behind it, um, which makes it really easy to consume. Um, this is actually one of my first jumping off points from reading Lord of the Rings into kind of more fantasy was picking up the Sword of Shannara, um, followed by the Elfstone of Shannara and the Wish Song of Shannara. It was kind of that first trilogy there, but really, really easy to consume. Right? I consumed it as something like a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, really enjoyed it. Um, and there's a bunch more books if you want to continue into this Shannara series, right? Really, really um, low maintenance, I guess, is a good way to, to think about it. Um, it's not one where you have to remember a lot of names or places or things. Uh, you kind of follow a uh, storyline as you're going through different quest arcs um, and, and, and easy to consume, easy to enjoy, easy to jump into fantasy. Kind of the definition of a beginner fantasy book in my mind here. That's fun. When I think of this book, I think of Aragorn. I don't know those sure. two. Sure. You know, that, actually, that's a really good comparison if you're thinking about them. Um, I don't think I've had you read these yet, no, not yet. Um, but but definitely in that same same realm of uh, you know the Aragorn series with the uh, the Shannara series are very very similar uh, in, in a lot of respects there. Um, and uh, Terry Brooks has written a bunch of these. In in, in a lot of ways, they, Terry Brooks reminds me of the fantasy like John Grissom, uh, if that yeah. makes sense, where yeah. he's written a ton of these books. And they're kind of formulaic, but they're good. Um, and and they're a little, like, little bit like candy. You're really not fighting hard to get to the, the good parts of these, um, where sometimes you may want a bigger challenge. For yeah. instance, if we're jumping to intermediate. <laughs> well, sorry, that's just how I, uh, exactly how I feel about that. that I jumped to the wrong book. That was a perfect... Uh, Rewind. What's it, what's it called? It's not a tangent, it's segway? a segue. My segue okay, was Okay, sorry. Rewind. Back into uh, intermediate. This, the rules have really turned here. You used to talk about this book nonstop, and now I can't stop talking about this. This is the Farseer trilogy, which yep. is actually part of a bigger world. But we'll just stick with these three for now, because I am about to finish the third one in like an hour, maybe two hours I've left. Um, so good. It is a little more advanced, just a little more advanced, but it's like still easy, and it's still... I would recommend this series to just about anybody. Yep. Especially if you've dabbled a little bit. Yeah, the Farsi Trilogy is a really easy, easy step into fantasy. I wouldn't say it's actually much of a step up from Shannara, but yeah. it is a step up. Yeah. Um, if you encompass the entire Elderlings saga that takes place, right, which is, I think, five different series, if I count them all behind me, got them uh, back behind here, um, it definitely adds up over time. There, yeah. There's a little bit of, of weight, but each individual series is so easily consumable mm -hmm. and so fun and so... Um, it j just the characters are so engaging yeah, that it gonna, really becomes easy to read. Yeah, you're going to love every single character. It's fast-paced. The first one isn't as fast-paced. The first one's a little bit more of the explaining and the world building and the character development, but yeah. it's still really good. And then the second and third, you just, you just waterfall through the whole thing. It's so great. 
Yeah, it is interesting. There's uh, there's some things that I think would put it in the intermediate category as opposed to kind of the uh, the more advanced category. Um, one of the things is it does fall into some of the basic fantasy tropes, right? You do yeah. have kind of an orphan that's trained by somebody and then has some mentors and and has magical abilities and um, right. It, I mean, the first book is called The Assassin's Apprentice, right? So it, it falls into those tropes, and sometimes those tropes act a little bit like training wheels. Yep. Um, right. And so they those do. training wheels really help you get through the story a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, those training wheels definitely come off as you get deeper into the Elder Ring Saga, yeah. um, and even bit. into the Farseer trilogy. Um, but but really really good to be able to get yourself into it and, and enjoy it, and definitely a step up from kind of that beginning of fantasy into a more intermediate realm there. Yeah. But definitely, it's not hard. Not a hard series. Yep. So I'm going somewhat similar, um, a little bit less known, but this is Jade City. Um, it is a, a fantastic, fantastic opening uh, salvo to, I don't actually know what the the uh, Jade, the, the Bone Saga, Green, Green, Green Bone Saga, that's it, thank you. Uh, they, there's the first book of the Green Bone Saga. Uh, Fonda Lee does amazing things here in this series. Um, it is a little different than some of what we've been looking at. A lot of what we've been looking at here is more high fantasy, uh, you know, sword, shield, um, dragons type of fantasy. Uh, this is more of a, a low fantasy, so it's set in our world. Um, it's set on a fictional kind of Asian island uh, that uh, somewhere in, in kind of that, that area um, where it's basically kind of the uh, an Asian mafia mixed with um, uh, magic series that is just phenomenal. I mean, the writing is good, the characters are good, the story is not too complex, but definitely has a little more um, definitely has more adult themes than, than any of these, um, but uh, it, it really uh, steps it up a notch and makes you think a little more, which I think is definitely a, an indicator that you're jumping kind of from the beginning to the more advanced, but still not crazy. Uh, it's a trilogy, so it's a little more consumable overall, um, but just a great book if you're looking to step up from something like Harry Potter. Nice. All right, what do you got? What's your On to the big guy. Literally. It's so good. Look how fat this is book is okay this is way of kings it's the first of five in brandon sanderson's what's it called stormlight archive yep and which is part of the huge cosmere world yeah so so, so it's technically the first of five of, you're right you're of sorry ten. So five there's, of ten there's like a, a five book story arc followed by another five book story arc yeah. that will be happening but i just count it as five because it helps me consume it a little <laughs> it is pretty easier. advanced yeah pretty advanced and it is big um a lot of characters, yep. a lot of craziness and weird, like you're jumping from, like, you're all over the map with different places, different people from different places. So you have to like learn their customs and what's going on and why people are in trouble and what the rules are and yeah. who's in charge and why they're in charge. But man, is it so good. Yep. I yep. miss this series. I need to hop back in. You know, one of the things I think that makes these advanced books compared to, to others, and, and actually a lot of Brandon Sanderson's probably fall into this category, is that it has a defined uh, system for magic yeah. that really needs you to understand it to be able to enjoy the book. That's a great way to right? describe it. Whereas other books, um, you think about Harry Potter, they just the magic just happens, right? There's no, there's no real um, need to understand why things are happening or reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. It just happens. And so I think that's a good way to grade as you're stepping up here of, and, and I definitely see that in, in these examples here, right? In Shannara, there's magic and the magic just kind of happens. Either you have it or you don't, that's all you kind of get. Yeah. Um, and in the Greenbone Saga, you get a little bit more of that, but there's definitely more rules around what, what happens here. Yeah. Same thing's true in exact Assassin's Apprentice. Exact same thing here. So this one, we'll start here. We've got like sirens, which are mermaids, which can like trap people's brains, right? Yep. Kind of just like, just that's just what they do. Yep. Um, and then Farseer, definitely more rules, a little bit more like complex and learning. And you're not just automatically good at the magic. So yes. lots of and, skill building. And one of the things that I find interesting is it can be very clear, for instance, in Farseer and in Stormlight Archive, that there's rules to the magic that you do not understand. And yeah. the character may not understand, but the rules are there. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in, in some easier books, it just kind of happens. It's innate. The yeah. person has powers. They just act. They're kind of more superhero-ish as opposed to following some rules. Yeah. It's just less to keep track of, which I think is a good indicator of it stepping up in scale. I totally agree. Um, I really highly recommend this. Just, it just might take a second to 
fully grasp what's going on. It's a commitment, but an excellent commitment yeah. to make. Yep, yep, yep. You know, oddly, I imagine for some people watching this, this book is the reason they're actually interested in fantasy, right? Because such a fantastic adaptation of this book and the following Song of Ice and Fire series were made as Game of Thrones. Um, and we don't need to talk about the last uh, few seasons there, but... Uh, Just a few episodes. But Game of Thrones, I think, is the quintessential advanced fantasy, right? Lots of people, lots of characters, a compelling and intense backstory that you really need to understand to understand the full picture of what's going on inside of Westeros or, mm -hmm. or the, the place that's happening there, right? There is a magic system that is kind of confusing. Um, and you know what? It stays pretty vague the majority of the time. But it... it also seems to have rules where not just any person can use it, not just any person can do it. Um, it, it. It throws off some of the basic fantasy tropes, right, that sometimes are the training wheels there, and actually throws them on their head in, in a lot of places. Um, <laughs> most notably with people losing their heads. Um, right? So it is kind of an interesting thing, but I think it's a great example of advanced fantasy. If you're enjoying the intermediate, right, you've picked up something like Assassin's Apprentice. Um, you're, you're enjoying that. Maybe Name of the Wind we could fall. That's somewhere, I think, in the, in the minute yep. there. If you're ready to jump into something more complex, more compelling, and that takes more work to enjoy, I think uh, Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire as a series, is a great place to go and a great example of kind of more advanced fantasy. Yeah. Just the politics alone. Like, whoa, my brain. Yep. I mean, it, it's, it's a lot to keep track of. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of just names and places and things. But it, um, it pays off. Like, the ends are all, like, it all right. wraps up in it. It's and awesome. It's probably a, a good way to describe this entire thing, right? With each book, there is an investment and then some uh, a form of reward, right? So with a lot of the beginning books, there's small investment and a small reward, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of quick. The intermediate, there's a little more investment and a bigger reward. The events tends to be a lot of investment, but also a really high reward. That's awesome. Well, we encourage you to uh, take a step up in whatever fantasy reading you're doing, whether you're jumping from beginning to intermediate or intermediate to advanced. Uh, I think it would be a great thing for you to pick up one of these books or something like it yes. and, and take the next step in your fantasy journey. Um, I'm just realizing this is the first time you've grabbed three books. All the books you picked, I haven't read. Oh, well, they were all excellent, and you should read them. I'll get to it. I think you're stepping into where you could read this, but this would sure be an easy one for you to pick up. I'm book. excited for that one. Um, and this one, almost at this point, you might get bored with how easy it is. Crazy. So, all right. Well, I'm Blake. I'm Jamie. We're Blamey. I guess so. See you later. See ya. Bye.